a Zurich. I think we might be having some trouble with my mic, but... Oh, we're back. Um, let's head straight out to David. He's, of course, standing by in Zurich. Um, hate to repeat myself if my mic was working, but David, let's uh, kick it off with the fact that we've got this non-farm payroll number later today. Uh, do we see basically this entire market really just go into slow motion mode up until January, uh, sorry, December 9th? Yes, I think in the short term, until we get some sort of clear resolution from Europe and hopefully a sort of final resolution, a decision move to really sort uh, the sovereign debt mess, uh, the market will still be undecided. We have a market which wants to go higher. We have seen it with the current rally because in many of the so-called secure sovereigns, you are now at inter uh, negative interest rates. So obviously, in terms of investment, uh, equities are very attractive, but at the same time, there is this big uncertainty these issues, what is going to happen in Europe? Is there really going to be a solution or not? So until the 9th of December, I don't expect any major data to support further rallies unless we have a surprise from the ECB, which is perhaps some sort of intervention or prelude to an intervention before the summit. Yeah, but I guess uh, in the bigger scheme of things, the idea is for these sovereigns, troubled sovereigns, uh, to be able to uh, fund their deficits in 2012 at far better rates. Right now, the ECB has been basically buying bonds left and right, but still sterilizing them. What if we get a conclusion that st stops well short of what the markets are expecting, which is printing money and ECB as the lender of last resort? Uh, that's really a risk, and that is also why many of the politicians keep saying we don't have to be dragged by the markets to take uh, a quick decision which doesn't really restore credibility in Europe as a whole. So I think intervention will have to be supported by a solution in terms of uh, reining in these huge debts by many of those economies. So it has to be a concerted action which can only happen when there is some sort of uh, fiscal union, some sort of uh, co-responsibility backed by a serious plan which can be sustainable in the long term. I agree to some degree that just having uh, some sort of intervention now, there is this big risk that is not big enough to restore confidence. So there has to be a combined approach, and that's why there's been those delays uh, from the politi political side to find a decision, because in Europe, given the structure, it is difficult to find consensus for any decision. Absolutely. Maybe we're pinning a little too much hope, uh, David, on, on this 9th of December summit once again. When you take a look at yields across the board in the periphery and now even within the bond market, David, do you see that continuing, that widening, uh, con uh, continuing into 2012 uh, from where you're sitting? And how does that impact the economies around uh, Europe? I think it has to be solved before 2012. I see huge anomalies in the market now. I, I see the, the Italian uh, bonds, for example, really completely mispriced in the sense that I see this more as a crisis of, uh, of confidence and liquidity in the short term, but not of solvency, for example, in countries like in the case of Italy. So having this huge gap between Italian bonds and bonds, which uh, essentially give you negative interest rate in the short term, is completely unsustainable. So I would be very surprised to see these pro progressing in 2012 in the same fashion. That's why even if there isn't a, a quick resolution uh, on the 9th, there has to be something, if not by the end of this year, by very early next year, because that would be really unsustainable. I'd like to see 17 countries get their act together in uh, less than a month, David. It's not happened in two years, but appreciate it. Have a great weekend. David Costa there, Dean of uh, Robert Kennedy College. In the meantime, I'm going to turn to those...